there is beautiful detail on the deck just there. How you going there guys? It's me again, Dan, and uh, you've tuned into Hearns TV. Uh, once again, so I can show you, go through an unboxing video with you. And today, I've uh, instead of I know I'm well renowned for doing aircraft, but this time around, I thought I'd do a warship, um, cause just for the, just for something different, and because of the amazing history of this vessel, uh, guys, I would like very much for you to meet the USS Indianapolis. Uh, she was a cruiser during the Second World War, she was one of two of the Portland class. Uh, USS Portland was the lead warship in her class and um, these were built as a result of um, what they learned from the previous class of cruisers, the Pensacola class. And um, this ship was commissioned in 1932. And uh, in 1933, she was stationed with the Pacific Fleet, uh, but on the morning of Pearl Harbor, she was actually on a training mission, so uh, was missed. Uh, was lucky to uh, miss the attack and uh, wasn't damaged. She was one of the first warships, actually, of the U.S. Navy to start uh, uh, shooting back at the Japanese after after that attack. So yeah, let's um, let's have a look at this kit and um, I'll tell you more about it as we go. Now, this is an Academy kit and um, it's a, a 350 scale and the box artwork is excellent. Um, I love it. The, it looks so menacing the way it's cutting through the cutting through the water like that. So when I open it up, actually, you guys will see there's even more beautiful artwork with this thing. Look at that. You will see this is what the uh, Indianapolis would have looked like from, uh, from the side. And uh, you, can, you can tell it's um, a pre-World War II design by uh, how simple it is. And there it's its main guns and then anti-aircraft guns, conning tower, funnel, and uh, targeting systems uh, and early warning radars. And uh, yeah, and the, uh, the propellers just there. So let's have a look at the kit, shall we? So I'll move that off, off to the side. The first thing we're going to have the first thing we're going to have a look at is the hull. Right there, I'll turn it sideways so you can see it comes in, comes in two parts. Goes together, I'll hold it up to the camera so you can, you can see. Actually here, there's actually portholes along there that you could, that you could drill out as well. There's, um, Edward actually has a photo etched uh, accessory to go with this to really bring out the details of the kit. Unfortunately, I don't have it. As you can see there, that's the length of the, the hull of the ship. She had a uh, five inch belt armor along the side here. And uh, there was 2.5 inch armor that was, uh, that protected the deck. Um, I'll show you the deck a little bit, uh, a little bit later, but um, it was actually quite well armored for, um, for, uh, for its weight. It was just over 10,000 tons, which was actually well below uh, the, uh, the, limit, the international limitations that were signed for uh, limiting the size of warships, actually. And um, let's have a look at, actually, I'll show you the deck as well. Here's the deck. I'll hold it up so you can see the, have a look. You can see it there. Now, I'm, once again, I'm not sure if the camera is actually doing this justice, but there is beautiful detail on the deck just there. Uh, the very, at the very front here, you can see where the, uh, where the anchors would be, and you can even see where the wood would be on the, uh, on the deck itself. Excellent, beautiful detail, and obviously where the main gun would go. Um, and here we have parts of what would be the conning tower and the superstructure that would be just behind it. Yes. I've only ever made a couple of warship uh, kits in my time, actually. I've made the Yamato and um, the Pritz Eugen, a German warship that was e escorting the, um, the Bismarck. Now, what, am I what have we got here? Ah, yes. Here we go. Here's the funnels of here where the smoke would uh, come out from the engines and more of the superstructure there. This would be 
uh, around where the conning tower would be. So this is the placements for all of the anti-aircraft guns and uh, the cranes that would fish out the uh, the float planes. It actually carried a couple of float planes for reconnaissance purposes and uh, more of the superstructure there. Beautiful details. You can see all the little hatches where uh, people would come, the crew would come in and out from and, uh, and all the little ladders and of course the portholes there once again that you can drill out for add a little bit more realism to it now let's see what we've got ah here are parts i'll start i'll show you this here these are the turrets for the main guns just there and uh the uh, the uss indianapolis was the last uh warship that had this sort of rectangle shaped uh main gun turrets that uh were sort of 1920s uh, naval design and naval thinking. And uh, yeah, so three primary primary turrets with three eight inch guns each. And I can show you there, just there. Eight inch shells, not quite as, and nowhere near as large or as heavy as on a major battleship, but still a significant, significant size shell. It could do a fair bit of damage. Um, when she was upgraded a little late in her service, they could actually lob a shell about 27 kilometers. And yeah, and plenty of fine details there. And here we have all the little life rafts that would go cling to the exterior of the, of, of the ship itself. Now, let's see what else. Uh, more of the finer details of the warship. Here's another lifeboat a larger one so these ones are sort of uh, uh inflatable and then the other two the other two um main gun turrets there and these are the emplacements that would fix them in place the cannons for the eight inch guns and here we still got some of the little anti-aircraft guns uh the predominant um purpose or role should i say that the uss indianapolis played uh, in the Second World War was an escort cruiser with uh, for the aircraft carriers and um, larger supply vessels. And she did a lot of shore bombardment uh, for landing forces, as well as uh, supplying anti-aircraft uh, fire and support fire for, the, uh, uh, for the, the carriers that she would have been escorting. Put those off to the side. And here. Blitzing through this kit, this is the st this goes at the very top here, the very top of the funnel, uh, where the uh, exhaust from the engines would come out. And here's the chain for the anchor. Smaller anti-aircraft guns there. We've got some more double anti-aircraft guns there, and the very, very, absolutely minute ones. This would be the uh, 50 cal. that would be uh, one one man operating them. And here we have the propellers that would go at the very back. So and propel it forward through the water. And oh, here's one bit I missed. And here's another part of the superstructure that the conning tower would be attached to. And here we have the stand. So this is where you put those into there and that would go underneath the hull and that would keep it in place. And it even has USS Indianapolis CA-35. So have its name as it's resting there and here i'm going to go through just lastly have a look at the instructions yes here we have say placing the hull together and this is where you can all the parts i was showing you before where the conning tower and superstructure goes together there's the funnel i like i like how this folds out actually it folds out and you can see all the pages four pages at the one time excellent kit and now we have let's put that there put that back and here it just shows you a little bit of uh of decal placement on um on the uss indianapolis now i absolutely blitzed through that kit um but just, to, just before we go um i want to tell you the uh one of the things that makes the uss indianapolis so famous is uh, how her time ended in a very unfortunate manner. 
on the 10th of July 1945, a Japanese uh, submarine, the I-54, I think it was, slammed two torpedoes into her port side and she sank in just over 10 minutes. Uh, with a crew of about 1,100, nearly 900 guys were in the water. And due to a lot of contributing factors, they were actually stuck in the water for four, I think, four days. And over those four days, uh, a lot of them died of exposure, salt water poisoning, and a whole lot of them were actually taken by sharks. That has been played up uh, somewhat in um, pop culture movies and that. Um, but yeah, a lot of them were taken by sharks. And out of the 900 guys that went into the water, about 315 made it out uh, after four days of floating around in the Pacific Ocean. Not the best way to go. But the USS Indianapolis has been located, uh, she's in about 18,000 feet of water at the bottom of the uh, Philippine Sea. And in 2018, the entire crew was awarded a Congressional Gold Star. Uh, and the, the USS Indianapolis, before she sank, actually earned 10 battle stars and was involved in the, uh, in the uh, uh, battles of Tarawa, Peleliu, um, the Gilbert Islands, even Iwo Jima and New Guinea. Uh, yeah, a very unfortunate end to a magnificent ship. But yeah, anyway, I uh, hope you liked that video. I hope you liked the, I hope you liked the kit. Um, I think I might do a little bit, a few more warship um warship uh, unboxing videos uh, uh, in the future as well just to break up the of how many aircraft i'm constantly shoving down your throat but anyway cool cool thanks for tuning in guys um don't forget to like and subscribe and i always look forward to seeing you in the store so we can have a chat in person and as always rock and roll cheers <laughs>